was lost, I was found by a life of sin and shame. Unto Jesus brought me out, and I've never been the same. So I will be Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. We want to welcome you here to the Anchor Church on this Revival Sunday night. How many's enjoyed the revival so far? Amen. I'm so thankful for what the Lord has done for the Anchor Church and churches. We will be getting ready to receive offering here tonight. But I wonder if you could lift your hands towards heaven and we're going to cry out to God that the Lord would have his way here tonight and we would discover his will, the will of God for this service, this gathering. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for what we, we have already experienced. God, every miracle, every healing, God, we are grateful for what we feel here tonight. And God, we pray that there would be a manifold, there would be a, an unraveling of your glory and your presence in this service here tonight. We pray for every best gift to be in operation, that God, the body, not only the preacher, but the body would be in operation here tonight. And we pray that it would be like an inferno that consumes us, that consumes every mind and every heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. If you believe God's gonna move in a mighty way, put your hands together. And be prepared to give at the giving stations in Jesus' name. The Bible says to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Can we just thank the Lord for all that he's done, all that he's been to us, Jesus. My heart is so full of gratitude, God. You've been so wonderful. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for giving us life and life more abundantly. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I've got so many reasons to praise you. Yes, oh God. You've been wonderful to me. Yes. Hallelujah. I was a wretch. I was 
I want you to stay on edge. I'm going to slide this in. I've never shared this before. Felt so strong. We were away for a couple of days. The Lord came to me and visited me in a very strong way. I felt like he gave me very specific instruction for this Sunday evening service. I could preach this. I don't feel like that that would be the will of the Lord tonight. I'm going to share it with you in a very condensed form. If you would put those pictures on the screen. Again, I've never shared this before. I, I, I probably will share this again, but I'm convinced. I am certain that the Lord gave this to me for tonight. It's a monarch butterfly. It flaps its wings around five to 12 times a second. The monarch butterfly is... As a caterpillar is quite resourceful. When it first emerges from the egg, it eats the eggshell and then it sheds its skin five times as it grows and makes a meal out of this each time. Listen closely. The monarch caterpillar can grow 2,700 times its original weight. This is impressive considering that it's only a cat in the caterpillar stage for 10 to 14 days. Outside of its vivacious, beautiful colors, there are other spectacular facts about the monarch, and I would think paramount to all of these things that I have mentioned and others that I could talk about is the journey that a monarch butterfly embarks on no less than 1,200 miles upwards of 3,000 miles from the northeast United States to the south east Canada, the mountain forest in central Mexico where they find the right climate conditions to hibernate from the beginning of November to mid-March. They do this weighing in at less than one gram each. When you really start studying monarch butterflies, there's even a, Pastor Bounds, there's even a, an even more, an elite class that are referred to within the monarch butterflies as the Methuselah butterflies. These are rare in that they not only make the southbound migratory journey, but this Methuselah generation, it's the fourth generation. In late summer and fall, the Methuselah generation begins a two-month, 6,000-mile journey. From southern Canada to northern United States to Mexico, where they stop to hibernate in the remote fir forest in February and March, they awaken and begin the return home, laying millions of eggs along the way. And here's the interesting thing, and I want you to listen real closely. Monarch butterflies were created, they were destined, they were predestined to fly. I wept, and again, this is the first time that I shared this publicly, and the Lord, this week, just a few days ago, quickened this for this service tonight. It's fallen my lot. It is my anointed assignment tonight to tell you, though, that all caterpillars 
don't turn to butterflies. A fly can actually drop an egg. God. And the egg that that fly drops can become a grub that burrows in. And in my words, you could study this, but in my words, this burrows slowly within a window. You heard me. The caterpillar stage is only 10 to 14 days, but it's a quick work, the egg and the burrow. But this burrow within that 10 to 14 days can eat away at flight. Born as a Methuselah, destined for a 6,000 mile journey, dropping eggs all along the way. The beauty of procreation. God, God created the butterfly to fly. But something in a 10 to 14 day window, God have mercy, could land on that butterfly when it's in the caterpillar stage and it can burrow in and within 10 to 14 days, it can eat away at the flight that was put in there by God. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you after 25 years of ministry, lean in and listen to me right now. Every one of us that are breathing have a much greater purpose than a butterfly. Doth nature itself not also teach us? God, God, when you were born, you were born with an eternal purpose. You were born to fly. Can I say it this way? Oh God, hear the burden, people of God. Hear the burden of this evangelist's heart tonight. You were born with a destination in mind. You were born with a purpose in mind. But the great tragedy, come on, the great tragedy that I have dealt with over and over again is people that are destroyed. Come on, people that are destroyed before they ever reach their destination. They fail before they ever fly. Because they allow something to get in their mind. They allow something to get in their spirit. And they were born with a purpose to fly. God created you with a destination in mind. God created you with a ministry in mind. God created you with an anointing in mind. Come on, but you hear me, none of us are above it. While we are predestined to do great things, while we are born with a great purpose, you hear me, it is our job, come on, to make sure that we don't allow anything to get in our spirits or in our minds that will eat away at flight. You hear what I'm telling you right now? God's talking to somebody. Come on. You were meant to fly with the eagles. Come on. And all you're doing is flopping around with the buzzards. I'm telling you, you got to get it out of your spirit. You got to get it out of your mind. I don't know what happened. I don't know what was said. Come on. I don't know what you went through. I don't know what kind of injustice you suffered. But you hear me. You got to make up in your mind. I'm not going to allow it to eat away at the flight. I'm going somewhere in God. I'm going somewhere. I look back over my life. And at 43 years old, I've done things for the Lord, but I do believe that the Lord allowed me to be born for the day and hour that I'm living in right now. But Brother Harris, as I look back over my life in the last 25 years of ministry, come on, I can tell you there's a list of things, come on, that tried to cause the flight to fail. There's a lot of things, come on, that landed on me. Come on, I hope somebody hears me preaching right now. There's a lot, there's a lot of flies that come by, come on, and dropped eggs, come on, eggs of potential for bitterness. Come on, I'm thankful 25 years into this that I didn't allow something to burrow in my heart or burrow in my life are you ready you have
have to preach in hashtags for people to get people's attention. You weren't born to be bitter. You were born to fly. I'm going to say it again. You were born to fly. You weren't born to be bitter. I want to tell a young person. I want to tell a young lady right now. I don't know what's going on. But I'm telling you, you got to make up in your mind. I'm not going to let that keep me from getting to where God wants me to be. I'm not going to let what they've done. I'm not going to let what they said. I'm not going to let what happened. It's not too late. Find that thing that's eating away at the flight. God, I feel this right now. Find what it is that's eating away at the flight in you. Find that feeling, because it's usually what it is, brother. It's a feeling. That's not, hey, that's where it's got to stop. Everything you feel is not real. You hear me? News break. Everything you feel is not real. And it's usually a feeling. I'm preaching to you right now. You can't let this get in your spirit. Come on. You'll self-destruct. You'll be another statistic. Another sad spiritual statistic. Get it out of your heart. Get it out of your marriage. Get it out of your family. Get it out of your spirit. Get it out of your life. Those that were born to fly, that fail to fly, because all caterpillars don't become butterflies. Bitterness will burrow in. It'll burrow in. It'll burrow in. It'll burrow in, sis. Bitterness, if you let it, it'll burrow in. I'll tell you something about bitterness. It'll not only keep you from flying. I've seen people take off. Huh? I've seen people take off and it, it, and it abruptly in flight. Because there's always flies trying to drop eggs. There's always spirits that are dry. Come on, are you hearing me? It's the grubs of life. You hear me? The grubs. It's the grease. Can I say it like that? It's the grease of life. Boy, I'm preaching in the Holy Ghost right now. You got to make up in your mind. I want to fly more than I want to be bitter. I want to fly more than I want to get even. I want to fly. I want to fly more than I want God to judge them. I want to fly more than I want to get recompense. I want to fly more than I want vengeance. People in this revival that are staging a comeback, you can fly. But the bitterness is the grubs or the griefs that are trying to bore themselves in. They eat away at flight. It only takes 10 to 14 days. The caterpillar stage is only 10 to 14 days. You know what that speaks to me? You cannot patty cake with pain. You don't play with it. It's not safe to simmer on stuff. You weren't born to be bitter, bro. You were born to fly. Can I just tell you, it's not too late to fly. There's still a destination God has in mind. There's still a purpose. I need this church to rally around me right now. Come on. I'm not going to let hurt hinder me. I'm not going to let someone, what they said, what they did. or Come on, God, somebody hear me right now. I wasn't born to be bitter. I was born to fly. You know when you make the decision to stay angry, to stay upset, 
that you know you're, you're the only one that suffers. That's how much sense anger makes. Tonight, I'm telling you tonight. What's your name? Glenn? Tonight. Nice to meet you, Glenn. Tonight. I don't care how deep it's burrowed in there. I don't care how many years it's been there. I don't care how many years it's crippled you. You've been stuck in the barnyard instead of soaring with the eagles. You've been flopping with the chickens instead of flying with the eagles. You hear what I'm telling you right now. It's in moments like this that if we'll open our heart, God will, uh, God, the Holy Ghost will come. Thank you for what you sung today. Thank God, God's so good to me. Come on, he's been too good to me for me to let something get down in my heart. Do you know? Do you know forgiveness is not about who's right or who's wrong? I don't forgive conceding that anybody's right or anybody's wrong. I forgive because I'm determined to be free. I'm preaching to people on Sunday night that ain't flying. You ought to be flying. Glenn, is that what your name? You was born to fly, Glenn. You, 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 were, you, you weren't born to live down on the level. You're like, you, there's higher heights. That's why, that's why he said, they that wait upon the Lord. Come on. No, not, not they that get angry with God or they that get bitter with God. Come on, no. They that wait upon the Lord. Somebody that's waiting on the Lord. That speaks of somebody that's free. That's free of grubs and griefs. He said, I'll tell you what they'll do. Come on. They'll, they'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. I know this is really direct and maybe it's nothing right now but I can promise you if you serve God for any period of time it'll be something I'm going to make this easy tonight if you're in this building please stand if you're in this building and you feel like that you've got a purpose I believe the Holy Ghost came here prepared to help you dig something out of your spirit. You were born to fly. You weren't born to be bitter. You weren't born to be broken. You were born to fly. You were born with a purpose. you're here and you believe with everything in your being we've had no two services alike I don't apologize for this one something power something so powerful is happening in this building right now I believe somebody's going to make a decision here it is I heard it in the spirit not another day I'm going to say it again not one more day not one more day is this going to keep my feet on the ground. Not one more day is this going to keep me bound. Not one more day is this going to keep me from my God-called destiny. Not one. Oh, that don't strike a chord? Well, maybe this will. I've cried my last tear over this. Somebody over here, is somebody over here feeling what I'm preaching? I have cried my last tear over this. This has kept me up for the last night. This has bound me for the last day. This has taken my joy, not another day. I'm going to take my joy back. I'm going to take my peace back. I'm going to take...
Halabokosha. You're in a church tonight that believes you can lay things down on the altar and leave them there and never pick them up again. Aren't you glad? Has anybody, be honest, I'm done. As I've been preaching, stuff been going. Where you're at now and where you could be. Has anybody had memories? Grubs, griefs, flies that drop little eggs. Is anybody having memories and breathing a sigh? Really? Boy, I'm glad I didn't let that get in my spirit. Boy, I'm glad once that got in my spirit, I'm thankful for a service like this that I realized it was eaten. It was eaten away at the flight in me. I can't get it off the ground. You can't get it off the ground because you got a grub eating away at your ability to fly. All of that potential. All of that purpose. And one little grub. One little egg. One little grub. Not all caterpillars become butterflies. Jesus have mercy. Not another day. It has, this has controlled me. Do you understand that bitterness is manipulative? And you've got to draw a line in the sand and say, not, a, not one more day of this. I just want to know if, I, I'm going to call everybody down here. I, I'm just, back up, give me some space. I just, I, I just feel like there's a, I don't know what it is about this area right here. I believe God's all over the building, but it's just, there's times I pass through right here and it's hot. I, I couldn't say that just everywhere because people wouldn't, people wouldn't understand. But it's, it's like a furnace, man, brother. I, 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 it's the entrance to the altar. Right here? Yeah. Yeah. You know why, you know why God gave me Brother Bounds? You know why he put him in my life? Because I felt like I was a freak all by myself. I found another freak. <laughs> it's two freaks in this thing together. Hallelujah. If you're here and you say, I'm, that's it. You know how it kids, you know how, you know how, you know when it stops feeding on you? When you get fed up. I don't want the grub to get fed up. Because if the grub gets fed up he's he's eat, he's eating away at all of your potential for flight but when you get fed up there's a hot area right here i'm telling somebody should have already been here i'm done this is not this is not i'm this is not going to control me another day i'm not going to be haunted by this i'm not going to be limited by this thank you sir oh my god he couldn't he couldn't make he couldn't make it past the entry I just seen the angels of the Lord touch that man right there. Something just, when he walked across the line, when you come here, I want you to come with your hands raised. I'm not going to be a slave to this. I'm not going to be bound by this. Go ahead, that's it. We got visitors coming. Come on right now. Come on, you better get yourself down here. I'm not going to be bitter. I'm not going to be bitter. I'm not going to be angry. Not one more day. Some of you need to find a way around. You need to get in this altar right now. You need to get out of that aisle. You need to press your way in. Church, I need you to help me pray right now. No more bitterness. No more guile.
Street Trio. Would you find somebody and pray with him right now? What's happening right now? I, you know what I feel? Something 30 years old is being broken right now. Something in somebody's life that's over 30 years old is being broken right now. You better get your hands up. You better get your voice raised. Come on, help me pray, musicians. Somebody's going to fly tonight. Come on. Somebody's going to fly tonight. You weren't born to be bitter. You were born to fly. Oh, I feel a release. Oh, I feel a redemptive release. I feel somebody being, come on. Come on, that proverbial. 
real bird set free out of prison. Come on, if you're feeling freedom, you ought to identify yourself. You ought to lift your voice. You ought to celebrate in the freedom you're feeling. I was bound, but not no, not anymore. I said I was bound, but not anymore. Oh my God, folks. He la la boko shata yala bahaye. Woo! He da la moshi. That's it. Oh my God. Yeah. We're not done yet, folks. It's early. Something's breaking in this place right now. Come on. The bondage. The hold that hate, the bondage that bitterness had on you, it ain't got no more. It's being broken. That's it, baby. I mean business. That's it, honey. Go ahead. Not another day. Not one more day. I dare somebody to get bold and say it. Not one more day. Woo! Oh, my God. That's it, man. Come on, just reach out to God. He's waiting on you right there. You got to open your heart. Lift up your head, oh, your gates. Be lifted up, your everlasting doors. Come on, if you get open, look what happens. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Oh my God, somebody's getting free right now. Holy Ghost is helping us right now. Oh my God, have mercy. Don't stop. Something's breaking out in here. Something's breaking out in here.
Come on, somebody, the Holy Ghost is falling right now. The Holy Ghost is falling right now. Come on, somebody ought to get excited about the Holy Ghost falling. Come on, somebody couldn't figure out why in the world we'd have church Sunday night two weeks in a row because of what's happening right here, right now. That's why. Woo! My Lord have mercy. My Lord have mercy. Jesus name. What's going on over here? You got who? What's your name? Maddox got the Holy Ghost. Somebody thank God. Chris got the Holy Ghost right up in this middle aisle right here. Come on, somebody give God some big praise. <laughs> See, Miss Haley, what happened? You feel good? You get the Holy Ghost? Haley got the Holy Ghost tonight, folks. You see there? Come on. Let's thank God for filling three brand new people with the baptism. There's a revival in this youth group. I said there's a revival. Somebody ought to just go ahead. Come on, somebody ought to just go ahead and rejoice right now. There's a revival in this youth group. I feel a rejoicing spirit in here. Oh, I know the devil had a plan, but God had a greater plan. Woo! Now, I want to really black, I want to black his other eye. I don't want you just to do this to be doing this. You, if you really feel like you got free of something tonight. You, you, felt, you felt something released. Just, just let me see your hand. You feel like you got free of something tonight. No. No, no. No, no. I ain't just going to black his eye. I want to I wanna, I wanna black it till it's shut. Bust him in the mouth too. How many say it was old? We want to ask you how much age is on it. But you got free of something with some age on it. Let me see your hand. Oh, my God. Come on, you guys already think I'm crazy, so I'm just going to do what I feel. I got a feeling somebody's about to fly. I got a feeling somebody's about to fly. Fly, baby, fly. You, well, pastors have to say it nice. Pastors have to be diplomatic. Evangelists can be crazy. If you're not here tomorrow night, you need a head examination. Uh, we're not even done here tonight, and, I, and I'm, I'm already looking forward to what's going to happen tomorrow night. How many is excited about what's happening in our church? You know what I want to catch? And this is contagious. I was praying it in the office. I've seen this catch probably half a dozen times in 25 years. It's contagious. I've seen this catch in the church. It's this, it's this infection of, uh, I'm not, I ain't missing. Because if, miss, if I miss, I'm going to miss something. Huh? I mean, I'm just doing what I'm supposed to be doing. 
back there getting ready for church. Here comes my freak friend, my brother from another mother. Come on. I'm back here trying to get ready for church tonight, and I'm missing stuff, Brother Harris. He comes in and says, well, he's out there praying just now, and I just prayed somebody through the Holy Ghost. That was before church. Come close this. Let's give the Lord one more good shout of praise and thank him. rejoicing over one. We ought to praise it for everybody that's been healed or delivered or forgiven or filled with the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I want you to call people between tonight and tomorrow night and say you can't miss it. If you'll come, God's going to change your situation in your life. I'm telling you, people are being healed. People are coming back to God. God is not finished with this revival. It's going to continue. It's going to continue. I've told y'all, I've been honest with you, the worst mistake of my pastorate has been in a season we were having prayer revivals. It was absolutely life-changing. We were doing night after night after night after night, week after week after week. And I'll never forget, as a pastor, I started wondering if I was taxing the people. And so I stopped the prayer revival because I felt like it was too over, could be too overbearing for some. And I regret it till, still to this day, nearly 15 years later. I'm not canceling this one. I'm telling you right now. We're going to have revival. We're moving forward. We're moving on. Come on, I'm telling you, there is something behind me, something in front of us. There's a fire of the Holy Ghost. Come on, let it spread. Let it spread from house to house and person to person and family to family. Call somebody and tell them, you gotta be at church with me tomorrow night. And God's gonna meet them there. Young people, ask your parents to come. Young adults, ask your parents to come. Get your parents here. Get your siblings here. Call somebody. Say, I want you to be here. Call some saints that aren't here tonight and say, you need to be at the house of God. I want to see you there. God's doing something. I do believe this is the hour. I believe it's it. I believe Jesus is coming and I want to get everybody in I can before he comes. Amen. If you have repented and or receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you have not been baptized, you need to be baptized. The Bible says it was a commandment. He commanded them to be baptized. Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. If you've not been baptized, the reason is Jesus died. He was buried. He was resurrected, which we're gonna celebrate this week, the resurrection we call Easter. Good Friday, don't forget that, 6 a.m. Everybody come, we're gonna have communion service 6 a.m. on Friday morning. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be very, very powerful. And we're gonna be awake and thriving, amen. 6 a.m., praise God. He hadn't, he, hadn't, he hadn't spoke in tongues in 52 years and God said, I think we ought to thank God for that. Somebody ought to shout, hallelujah. hallelujah, hallelujah. He died, he was buried, he was resurrected. You died in repentance, you gave your life to the Lord. You know what you do with a dead person? You bury them. The Bible says in Romans 6, we are buried with him by baptism. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we shall arise to walk in newness of life. You've been planted together in the likeness of his death. You shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. I'm telling you, he'll make all things new. When you're baptized, it washes away every sin to be treated as if you never sinned. Amen. I want you to ask somebody near you. 
Somebody you pray with, say, have you been baptized in Jesus' name? If they said no, I want you to say, would you like to be? If they have not been, I want you to ask them, do you want to be baptized? Come on, ask somebody. Ask them if they'd like to be. Do you know in Acts 22 and 16? Acts 22 and 16, he said, why wait? Why tarryest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. If you're here and somebody said they want to be baptized, I want you to raise your hand. We got one right here. Can you say amen? Is there anybody else that has not been baptized that would like to be baptized? Amen. We don't want to miss it. Listen, I grew up this way. Jesus is coming. We don't. We don't wait till baptism Sunday here. Very same hour. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God. Anybody else want to be baptized? All right. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name. Of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Tell me who can stand before us when we call on his great name. Power. 
power in the blood oh, of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood, and would you or evil victory win? There is a wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, wonderful power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. And what can wash away my sin? Everybody, nothing but the blood. Sing it. And what can make me whole again? Oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And oh, precious is the blood that makes me white as snow. during praise and right before service was started actually he said in that young adult meeting we had last night which was so powerful thank you brother Mark for pouring your heart out to our young adults and young people but he uh, he said I realized last night something came to my mind you can either say one day or you can say day one Today is day one, Brother Elijah said. It can be the start of the greatest beginning of your life. Amen. We're going to rejoice with this, this young man who's going to be baptized. It's so exciting. Amen. To see people give their life to the Lord. It really is. I'm just going to tell somebody. God is moving marvelous ways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a spirit of worship in this room. Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do. Jesus. You're the center of my joy. Help me sing the night, Jesus. You're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. You're the center of my joy. The old song says, There is no secret what God can do. How many believe that? What He's done for others, He'll do for you. 
his arms wide open, he will pardon you. Lift your hands and say tonight. For there is no secret what God can do. He's done for others. He will do for you. With his arms wide open, he'll pardon you. baptism tonight thank you Lord for another name been written in the Lamb's book of life we rejoice in that hallelujah hallelujah God let your spirit move all over this building right now touch another heart another life let somebody realize they're not too far to be forgiven too bound to be set free. Too broken to be put together. Daughter Work Churches, we welcome you to be here to be ministered to. God bless you tonight in Jesus' name.